So are you going to uh, mediate the... Uh... I'm going to do whatever you would like me to do, uh, young lady. Cool. Uh, I really like... Can I see, like, a cartwheel, some gymnastics? <laughs> oh, my God. Is he? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That... Audience, it's a, it's a zero, zero, one. Yay! <laughs> that, that was really <sighs> unimpressive. <laughs> All right, your turn. No. All right, yeah, no, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> well, uh, okay, thank you for joining us. I, my pleasure. It's good to be here. And um, we'll just uh, so I want to ask you a couple of my questions if I could, and then we'll open up to the crowd and their, their questions, if that's okay. Yeah, I, I think I can do better than that. How about that? You do better than okay. you go ahead. So, everybody remembers The Exorcist, right? Does anybody know anything about my life prior to that? Okay, I was born. <laughs> Whoa, you heard it here first. <laughs> I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. My family moved to. Connecticut, where I was raised in the woods, about an hour from New York City. My mom saw an article in a magazine. She couldn't remember if it was Time or Life or Look magazine way back when, just talking about kids in the entertainment business, modeling, commercials. In New York, of course, it's Broadway. California's more Hollywood, more television, movies. So... In New York, it's very much business. And she thought it was something maybe myself and my brother and sister could be involved with. And she felt that it was a way to save our money. It was very apparent when I was young, I wanted to be a doctor to the animals. So she said, well, you know, this could be a way you could save your money and go to school and be whatever you want to be. So that is basically what happened. And because it was only maybe 15 of us that were in New York that fit the profile of, you know, a five-year-old, an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, there was only a few of us that were constantly working. Then commercials came along. And what a lot of you don't realize is I come from the era where you, you have, maybe some of you know, where you'd see the black cape over the camera man and and he'd be with a box camera that's where i come from yeah the the entertainment business the television was black and white i mean people used to sit around and listen to radio that was how people got their entertainment they were storytellers and they would sit the family would gather you know after dinner as a family and listen there was nothing else and then television was created so it was black and white and years later, I found out, way, way after The Exorcist, when I was actually given Dick Smith his Academy Award, that there was, um, he was, um, there was Alice in Wonderland in black and white. Uh, it was a television special, and he had to create the makeup because it was different for TV. And people forget, a lot of you are into makeup now and having fun, and so, he created the makeup so it would show, like there were different reasons. It could have been a reflection, could have been this, could have been that. The characters were insane in this. I've never seen it before or after. So anyway, he, uh, he was the one that did all that. But then you have, you know, we remember an I Love Lucy. You remember the Jack Benny show. You remember this and this and this. Then they had Sullivan show. Then you remember, oh, you know, the Beatles. And, oh, they were racy or Elvis Presley. You know, he certainly wasn't allowed to, you know, shake his leg because that was too much. Get him above the waist, above the waist. Everybody had to have their foot on the floor if you had any type of bed scene. There was all these regulations. The old Hayes Code. Yeah, and then later it was, um, you know, color started, technicolor, and then the movies, and if you think back, you know, during World War II, and they'd, people go to the movies, well, it went from a silent movie, you had your Charlie Chaplin's, you had your um, Douglas Fairbanks, uh, Mary Pickford, um, and, and then they're the ones that created um, uh, United Artists. 
because years later, like I'm, I'm flying through history, but, it, but there's a point to it. The, Warner Brothers controlled. See, that's why you would hear like Betty Davis and all of these, um, 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 Joan Crawford, you know, fighting for these roles because they were controlled, the studio system. And then you had Universal and MGM. And so some of these actors got together and created United Artists. And now I get it because they were tired of it. It's the same thing as today's times. Everybody, they're tired, they want change. We the people speak. You know, we the actors, we the this. This is what we want. It's why unions came in. I get it now. And there's so much that people aren't thinking about why and what and where we're at in the world. Which leads to, so I'm doing these, the, 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 the print ads, and I was known as the Cinderella Girl. In New York Times, every week on Sunday, they'd have the Cinderella ball. Cinderella has a ball. And it was three of us. And we'd fly, they'd fly us to Florida, the Bahamas, New York, different places, and uh, the World's Fair. And we'd take pictures in these beautiful children's clothes and uh, gorgeous photo spreads that would be in, in the, the Sunday paper. So I had this you know, image, whether it's Sears and Roebuck or, you know, then I did commercials, which you can Google now. Somebody showed me the other day, you know, they're, they're, they're on the internet, on YouTube now. So when I'm like six years old, just put like Linda Blair doll commercial, Linda Blair commercials, and you'll see Carefree Sugarless Gum, Downy Fabric Softener, um, Tubsy the doll, hi Heidi. You'll see all these things. I did over 75 commercials. So you, you're basically trained. You do what they tell you to do, and that's it. It is time consuming, it's difficult. So <clears throat> I got to a point where I said to my mother, I had to get the courage up, you know, I really want to study because my friends were smart and they're getting ready to go to veterinary school. And I want to go to, to Cornell. And I knew I had to concentrate. I'd be B plus, A minus average. And that was real, um, but I knew I had to do better. And so she's like, I said, I just, I want to quit. And she goes, okay. But you had to finish up a couple jobs. It was like two weeks. And that's when the interview for The Exorcist came along. Now, nobody, at the time, it was just, back then, if a book did really well, and was number one. I mean, everybody in the world was reading that book. Kind of like, um, oh gosh, what, what would be um, the gray, the, the sex book, what's it called? The Fifty Shades of Gray. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> stuff like that where all of a sudden it's like everybody's got to read it. The New York Times bestseller list was a Bible of culture at the time. Whatever was at the top of that list, yeah, everybody was reading. Yes, The Godfather, you know, I'm trying to think way back then. Hmm? Love story, right, yeah. right. So and that's what everybody was sort of doing it into. So the exorcist came along and it was like, what? You know, the entire planet. But I was a kid and I wasn't raised Catholic. And it's really important that people understand. I was raised Protestant, be good to others, be kind to others, be charitable. I am a product of how I was raised. I had a really nice minister. I had a great set of parents. They're gone. Everybody's gone. But I didn't forget. And it can't stop being who I am. So the exorcist certainly was one of the hardest things anybody, I don't care if you were an adult, a child, I don't think very many people could have made it through just because it was so hard. But the discipline came from my entire life. I was taught ballet, I was taught gymnastics, I was taught sailing, piano, they are disciplines. Now people walk around with their pants hanging off. And there, there's no discipline. It's, it's, um, it's hard. It's hard for me to look at what's happening out in the world because people are, everything has been, the rules have been taken away. You know, I don't care about you. And, and it's, the world has gotten so hard. So the exorcist, in my opinion, forget about the part of, you know, put, uh, you know cut through, uh, put it together. You look at everything and you go, oh, okay, this is what, this is what they were doing, because I had lost track and lost interest. All I wanted to do was be with my animals, my friends, my horses. It was survival. 
and you compartmentalize and you just put it there and you're like, this is not what I care about, but for some reason these men seem to need to get this done and put slap on this ugly makeup and whatever. And I had to do my job. So it's all done, the movie comes out, I see it and I'm, I knew immediately that it would change my life, but I didn't understand how. You can't. You're just a person in the audience going, everybody's applauding and, you know, and I knew something had changed, but that was all I knew. Now you have all of the, the Catholics, you have the Bible thumpers, you've got all of these different um, uh, uh, pockets of, of, uh, of religion. Now they start attacking me. I'm 15 years old. I have nothing to do with it. So Warner Brothers sent me on a world tour. I went to um, um, England and, and Australia and Japan, and they wanted to keep going. It was really hard. You, there was no multimedia. There was no um, internet. There was nothing. The reporters had to come to a room like this, and you sit at a dais, and years later I was you know, with Richard Burton, and we have all those pictures, and you sit and talk. And I didn't know. I mean, I just did the best that I could. And they were asking very adult questions about religion. You know, was I in a mental institute? What about this? What about that? Uh. You know, they were asking questions, but I could see in their eyes that they genuinely thought that a 15-year-old girl knew the answers to these deep questions about the devil, about God, and so I'm answering, you know, the best I can. Cut to years later, you know, and they're still making and fabricating because it wasn't good, it wasn't good enough to them that I was normal. Mm. It, they needed me to be very weird. They needed me to be an unusual object, the elephant man. They needed me to be something, and I wasn't. And that, they couldn't, so they would make up stories and headlines. And of course that's hurtful. And I would say to my mother, why did they do that? And she said, I don't know, but just always tell the truth and you'll be fine. So I say that to you in your life. Always tell the truth and you'll be fine because you can't, you forget a lie, but you'll never forget the truth. And the truth will stand. And so through the years, the next movie was, uh, they put me in, uh, that now the agents the big, you know, uh, business side of entertainment comes in. So you have William Morris, and they put me in Airport 75. And my mom and I are sitting, um, you know, I just have a little honey wagon, which is, the, you'll see the, um, the trailers, and you'll see, like, a couple doors on them. So it was a honey wagon. You know, I certainly wasn't anybody enough to have my own trailer, nor did we need it. And mom and I were sitting there, and you watch Charlton Heston walk by. And mom would say, oh my God, it's Moses. <laughs> you know? And then here comes George Kennedy, Karen Black. And of course, I knew her from the, the trilogy with the little dolls running around going, hee, hee, hee. and I was like, <laughs> um, My memories are like, um, 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 I want to say Hel um, Helen... Um, Oh, God, she's saying, uh, the, the, oh, golly, hang on. Um, what movie? Helen Reddy. Helen Reddy. Okay, all right. So I'm the little girl who's sick with the kidney issue, and they now have Helen Reddy, who, of course, is so famous at the time. I am woman, hear me roll, but it's too big to ignore. So she, and she's a nun going, he click, 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 click. <laughs> so from my point of view, I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. What is this? And, uh, and then I sat next to, just there were so many wonderful people, Gloria Swanson, and you don't know who she is, but she was one of the oh. original black and white. You know, yeah. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my clothes off. Mm -hmm. Gloria Swanson, but I didn't know who she was. And she's sitting there, and she has this little, what was called a train case at the time, and it's basically a, a hard plastic, it's a makeup box leather or whatever, and then she's digging around, and I don't want to be rude, you know, but I'm sort of, you know, look, and you know how we are as humans, what, what are they doing? More interesting than what I'm doing sitting here by myself. And so she said, honey, if I can teach you anything, 
always take care of your face, always take care of yourself. Well, that sticks. Certain things stick. Somebody said to me today that I was a marker in their life. And I said, you know, that's a good way to put it. I mark people's lives in some way. Your wedding, um, birth of a child, just certain things, graduating school, your driver's license, whatever it may be, your first love. So the exorcist, I know, stood out. And so um, anyway, so things like that, they stay in... in and so cut two years later, where I, um, people say, gosh, you know, you, what are you doing different? And I just said, well, you know, I, I try to take care of myself. So like I'm a vegetarian, then I became a vegan. There are reasons why, and it's all about taking care of yourself. And of course, everybody knows, again, I'm gonna cut too really fast because we only have this much time. I have the Linda Blair World Heart Foundation and it's for animal and human welfare. So I started out talking about health, food, genet genetically uh, modified foods, how it affects you, about uh, acid rains in our rivers and where cancer was coming from. So cancer is something that has been definitely forefront in my life, trying to make a difference because so many lose their lives to it and most of it is food generated uh, environmentally. You know, there's a lot of different, um, you have your pesticides, so many things that are being misled in information as to what the foods were. And people now see all the sicknesses that have come from that. But one day here I'm trying to help others and I turn around and I see my animal friends in need and that's when I went, no, well, no, no, no. Back to basics, these guys were having some laws, what happened? So that's why I put my name on a foundation, and then here we go, and the next thing, I've got breed bands I'm fighting, the misinformation about pit bulls, the misinformation about that, I'm fighting this, fighting that, then Hurricane Katrina comes. And I was compelled to go, I had to go. And I slept in the back of, um, the last truck that I could find, you know, I went to my big five, I had my duffel bag and I had everything that I needed. I'm very self-providing. I'm emergency oriented. Uh, my mother taught me that and that's some of the handout sheets I give at the table to remind everybody to stay ready. It, the environmental changes, it's not a question, it's <clears throat> not a not, it is happening. So you don't know when the next storm is gonna come. So Alabama is facing challenges today. The West Coast, you've got the fires burning. Then the next thing you've got the, 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 the flash floods. And I remember flash floods in Arizona when I was used to train and show horses. And I went to um, Tucson and um, um, Phoenix and the bridges literally washed out. Mm -hmm. That's how bad the flash flooding was. You know, families just lost their lives recently. It's that fast that your life can change. People try to drive through something and boom, you know, the car, they're swept away and they lose their lives or their family. Do we so, have any Hurricane Andrew uh, veterans? Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. you know, yeah. and it's not going to change. So you have to be prepared. You have to be smart, you know, and you can't rely on, on others. You, you ha And you have to be ready and, and to help others. So I went through Katrina and it was something that changed my life forever, no doubt. The shock and awe of what happened right here in our own country definitely changed me. Get back to California, I've got 51 dogs. I mean, I camped with dogs, I, I drove dogs. I, I get back to California and a year later I bought the property, assuming in a couple years we'd be able to get it under control you know, have all of our emergency stuff, pre preparedness. Never did I realize or see, and I just realized recently, the technology is what did it. Because everybody could now start having litters of puppies, selling them on the internet, doing this, doing that, whatever it is. And the internet is actually what has destroyed this and made, created the crisis for this pet overpopulation that I really don't know we can stop. That's how bad it is. They say laws must be changed. Hardest thing there is to do. Look at how Washington fights for the human rights. And we're fighting for all the different things. 
here in America and internationally that we're all very awestruck right now what's going on. And so changing animal laws, it's an uphill battle, you guys. And so, but every single dime and everything I do is for the greater good. And it's certainly, but saving lives is most important. Back to The Exorcist. So if the movie is about good and evil, and all of, we, it starts in Iraq, we're still fighting the war in Iraq. I mean, we're still fighting the war of where The, the Exorcist starts. And it's an intelligent film, it's a theological, it's about good versus evil and who wins. And it's about each one of us and what we represent, what's inside of us. I think when you look at Reagan's journey and when they were looking at her psychologically, when they started doing medical tests and all of the different factors, I get it because it has to be, there's so much, the brain is very delicate. And so the trauma or, or something that could be going on is what can trigger a weird behavior, whether it's human or animal. Um, what is it? Why can people be set off so fast? What is it that is triggering everything that's going on right now? So a lot of it is the mental health care we really need to address and support. And that was the journey Reagan went on, and then all of a sudden, you know, we get to that point where it's like, no, pretty sure there's something inside of her. <laughs> and then that's where the movie really takes off, and we all know, I, of course, can spin my head around. <laughs> it's good, wasn't it? <laughs> so, that is what I think is the movie is very prevalent today. It is, we haven't gotten very far at all, and it's worse than ever. But you can't think on a negative. I just posted an article on my Linda Blair World Heart Foundation talking about how to keep compassion in today's times. Just read it. Go on my Facebook. And it's Linda Blair World Heart Foundation. There is a lot of people that are posting, I'm also real Linda Blair. In case you didn't know. <coughs> Ta-da! Um, but there's Linda Blair, there's all these things, but they're not me, you guys. And that's the problem, it's really, I've, I've seen some of these sites and they've so, they take so much from my real sites, it's, it's a mask and there's people that will answer and you all think you're talking to me, you're not. So that's the best I can do with this fabulous technology. Um, but in the meantime, so you know, I've made lots of movies. We did Born Innocent, which is about child abuse, and Sarah T, Portrait of a Teenage Alcoholic. We did uh, Sweet Hostage with Martin Sheen, and I worked with, um, you know, Richard Burton. Come on, you know what that was like? It was like, holy shit, that's Richard Burton. I mean, he was amazing. Kirk Douglas. Yeah, but I didn't get to work with him. But they weren't No, okay, okay. Uh, he, he and Liz, Liz Taylor, were my parents. Oh. You know, I think yeah. they sent me off to school, and I never saw them. Oh, <laughs> one of the situations. That was called Victory at Entebbe, or Terror in the Isles. That's the name of the movie, and they played my parents. But I, mean, I, of course, got to see them, but I was a fan. I was 17. It was like I was still, you know, a normal young person that was in awe, just like others are. Um... And it, you know, it goes on. Um, I always think about um, uh, d a lot of different films. Men can get away a lot more with doing comedy and, uh, and drama. And it was one of the things that Whoopi Goldberg, um, uh, Robin Williams, all these different ones. If you were funny, when I grew up, when, if you were funny, you couldn't do drama. If you did drama, you couldn't do comedy. Robert De Niro. I'm trying to think, there's only so many that were able to break those walls down. So for me, it was really hard because we are the exorcist. The exorcist, not the audience, but Hollywood. Until, and there was one gentleman, I don't know if he's here, and he came as a character of, of Father May I in, in Repossessed. Watch Repossessed, it's funny. And it's to remind you The Exorcist is an amazing film but we can still, you know, 
laugh at the jokes. I mean, it's not a joke, but it's kind of sort of, because nobody spins their head around. Mm. So those are the factors, you know, to think of, that the wonderful years of entertainment that I was able to give you, I'm fighting for everything that I can right now for, really, it's, it's just, I can't stand by and watch the animals suffer like they are. It's just, I can't do it. So it's hard for me to go back to work. If I was, I'd be directing, producing. I had several projects at the studios and television, and I'm tempted to just sell them and see if something, and I don't know if I can ever get this animal welfare to a point where I feel comfortable to go back to work with entertainment or, um, you know, I, producing, directing, showing you what emotions and what feel and, and making people go through a journey. So that, that's who I am. Um, you guys can figure out later how old I am. It's, it's hard. The aging process is hard. And everybody's going through it. And so trying to find the answers and live a, a healthy, quality life for you and your family, it's important. I have a book called Going Vegan. It's on the table. Um, we have information about the animals and, and, and so on. Again, it's Facebook, Linda Blair World Heart Foundation or lindablairworldheart.org, the website. And then Real Linda Blair has a lot more of the fan stuff on it. Um, and now your turn and your turn. Actually, I think I just got the high sign and I think we hit, we've hit our time, unfortunately. I'll tell you what, who's got one, who's got one question like to ask for that? All right, I'll tell you what, a young lady in the, in the blue wig. How about you? Yes, you. In the glasses. So, you know, my friend, she really loves Was there any time when you were filming the Exorcist that anything weird happened? No, and if you guys really want, I, I tell you this because we're out of time, but the, go get the Blu-ray. And it has the Exorcist documentary. You know what? You can probably YouTube it now. It's the it's the the documentary that they did. It's insanely fabulous, and we answer everything. They show you behind the scenes of me as the child drinking a milkshake when I drank drank dairy, and just it shows you how normal we all were. I never. They always talk about kids can feel things more than adults. And by the way, you know who uh, Tyler of uh, the Hollywood Medium. The young fellow, my episode is finally airing on Wednesday. Yes! Ooh. Sorry. No, no. Well, I got, yeah, I, really sorry, right. I got very excited. Mark it down with that. Mark it down with we that. We actually filmed it over a year ago, and the, and the last dog that I presented to him, he came to read animals. Just, and so it's a really different version. It's not about me. I wouldn't let them read me. There was nothing. I, I didn't have any. I'm, I'm good. I know when my parents, I know, did this. I know to do... I just wanted to see, we were seeing if he could read animals and to help him on the journey. But the last dog is Hollywood, it's, it's Katrina Holly. And um, she, she did pass away. That was the last of my Katrina dogs. It, that was a hard journey for me. So anyway, I do uh, whatever, it's, it's next Wednesday, like August 2nd or right, something well, like we'll, that. We'll so please watch. Um, yes, you, you can watch, you, you look up YouTube, you can see a whole bunch. I have a YouTube channel, but nobody knows. It's Linda Blair World Heart Foundation. Okay. Right, it's just to... dog stuff. <clears throat> I'm the voice behind everything. So anyway, I was uh, walking along and I needed some help. I'm a rescue. That's me. Wow. What's, what's, I know, if people only knew that's me, you could watch me, more me every day on that. All right, Go boss, ahead. last question, bring us home. I was curious, um, did you get involved at all with Bert Ward and his wife? Bert, okay, his food, awesome. It's called General Giants. I promote it all the time. It's clean, it's great, it's wonderful. Of course, I know and love Bert, yes. Okay, everybody, okay. hey, thanks a lot. If you have more, <laughs> come to my table. Ladies, Linda, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause this lady. Bye, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with us.